preseason depth charts don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. but, uh, when you guys release the depth chart, we were, I was a little surprised. And Tim Wall football, Baldwin's name on there, on there first. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you're going to have a lot of competition in that room. But as you go into it, uh, how do you look at Tim and, and Samson and, and Steven in regards to uh, what you're expecting out of them early and, and how you think it all might play out during the course of fall camp? Well, I mean, the great thing is you got a bunch of guys in there who understands what's at stake, you know, and, and it's going to be an opportunity for all of them to get a chance to show what they can do. So, yeah, at some point, you know, somebody got to go off first. You got to write somebody first on the depth chart. But those guys know that that really don't mean what's going to happen as we go through the competition of this preseason. So um, as we go through, I think we've seen today um, trying to spread the reps around, put a bunch of guys in op in, to have opportunities behind your number one offensive line. But more importantly, no matter what line they're behind, making sure their details and execution is on a level that you need it to be. So it'll be a day-to-day -day thing, you know, and all the guys are embracing that competition, and that's what you want. Zach and then Jim. Uh, I guess uh, Trent, and we only have freshmen, and they got uh -huh. a ton of time with him, but he certainly looks the part defensively with a 6'3", 230 pounds. I'm curious kind of what does he bring to that position, especially as a guy that maybe sit on, was certainly on size and was getting some of your bigger leads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, he got nice sizes continuing to develop um, in the weight room and different things like that, learning the system. Um, still coming back, nursing uh, injury that he had coming off of his senior year. So when he's fully available, I mean, it'll be something that we'll be able to evaluate. But at this point, he's kind of doing the thing, getting the mental reps, uh, continuing to rehab and put himself in a position to be 100% healthy when the time comes. Well, I mean, that was the intriguing part about, you know, returning to IU is just looking at the overall offensive system that they have, man, great minds up there, and being able to come in and just put some touches in that running back room to help, you know, to continue to upgrade that. So, you know, some of the things as far as the run reads, just some of the things we emphasize in there as far as the eyes, footwork, timing, you know, pace to velocity, et cetera, the things that it takes for a great runner to be successful, um, those are the things that's being stressed currently. You know, and, the, and that was going on through the spring. So I'm very confident as we get into the season and, and live situations as those things will bear out. The more exciting part is you got your full complement. So you got all these guys here. You got, you know, um, David Ellis and you got Steven. You got a bunch of guys that you didn't have access to in the spring that you'll get a chance to see what they do here when we get rolling. You don't carry the Super Bowl and the NBA trophy with you? No, nah, I don't carry that Super Bowl, the Super Bowl, ring, Super Bowl trophy or Super Bowl ring with me. I do wear it at times. Um, but the Emmy is sitting at, at the house too, so it's all good. That's, that's superficial in the grand scheme of it because when you come in here, man, you got to roll up your sleeves and, and, and earn an honest day's pay. Kevin and Dustin. Uh, all security, how much are you a stickler for it? Uh, what have you seen so far from the spring in terms of those guys? And how important is that going to be in your evaluation and your decision making in terms of you know, who's working with you guys in terms of? Yeah, it's very, very you know, important. I mean, I went through our vision statement yesterday with the guys. And the number one thing was you will protect the quarterback and you'll protect the football. You can't do those things, you can't play. You know, so um, I think, you know, just, you know, my history um, with running backs as far as ball security has been on the upper end and just understanding the importance of it for our team and our overall success, that'll continue to be stressed. So everything counts. I tell these guys, everything counts. I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at drills, ball security, how you, you know, how you, um, Pass protection, all the aspects of you know running back play will be evaluated. Finishing plays down the field, that was a big thing today. I said you should stand out on tape. There's a bunch of things that you can stand out on tape for, and I'm looking forward to watching this practice tape here in a little bit. Dustin and Griffin, you know, just keep going on that as far as when you're evaluating, you know, who starts, who plays, how, how much. Is it about just being the most complete guy? Is there anything that's weighted? I guess is there any sort of aspect of the game that you think? I don't want to say you think mm -hmm. it's more important, but I guess just is more critical. I think it's the most complete guy, you know, because I I don't want to be in a position where we got a pass and all oh, I don't trust this guy in pass protection, or we got a situation where man I really don't trust he he's a great runner but he fumble, 
you know, every 20 carries or something like that. So those are things. I mean, the guy got to be a complete guy. He got to be able to do everything. You know, yes, you'll put guys in positions to maximize things, but as far as who your starter would be, he needs to be the most complete guy. You can complement with guys who got strengths in other areas, um, but your starter is going to be your most complete player. Well, I think it was a great plan put together overall. Um, you know, with Coach Wellman's um, input as far as not having today be a very long day because you can start getting diminishing returns. You got all this energy coming back, and next thing you know, you're practicing for two and a half hours. It's just too much. So we're doing a great job of ramping it up, keeping the guys, you know, and just kind of tempering it and building towards what we want as opposed to coming out and letting everything fly today. I know there was a study in the NFL that talked about after day three, day four with soft tissue injuries, you know, did occur with guys as far as if you come out too, you know, with too much activity. So we, we're doing a good job of kind of tempering it and building towards what we want. So that's a way that you can kind of compartmentalize that to a degree. And, and so you don't climax too soon. Well, the, the, the schedule that we're doing right now was adopted from what we did in the NFL. So this, this, tour, uh, this training camp schedule is, um, you know, I proposed it a couple of weeks ago, you know, to the, um, to the coordinators and then obviously ultimately to Coach Allen. And that's kind of what we're rolling with. So putting together some things where basically by the time we get to dinner time, you know, at 5.30, 5.40, I think it is, this entire day is wrapped up as far as the install for this, the practice this morning. We'll lift, we'll watch the film, and then we'll do a walkthrough that'll be a continuation of the practice that we just had. So when the guys go to dinner, so after dinner, everything is, is preparing for the next day. So that's something different you know, than, than what was here in the past. The guys seem to like it because they get an opportunity to get information, sleep on it, come in in the morning, we have another meeting kind of to brush up on that stuff and then we go. So, you know, it's, it's, it's real good as far as just internalizing the learning process, getting an opportunity to digest it, ask questions the next day and then go out and perform. So that's something we did. Um, all of the internships I did, but then definitely at the Chiefs, that's definitely what we did. So those are some of the things as far as just kind of programming for success, scheduling for success. Well, um, you know, David Ellis, I like him a lot. You know, when you, when you start talking about some of the higher end um, skill wise, skill, you know, uh, sets of the guys on offense, David Ellis' names continue to come up. The thing I want as a running back coach, I need him to show, yeah, I know he's a dynamic athlete, but when we're talking about at the running back position, I want him to be able to show some of that grit and toughness as far as hitting that up inside, moving the power, getting behind his pads, being a complete player who can play with velocity and power also. You know, yeah, I know he can play with finesse, bounce stuff to the outside, but I want him to be able to put his foot in the ground, run through somebody's face, um, be strong in pass protection, a complete guy. You know, so those, those are some of the things I'm looking to see um, David take the next step to. As far as some of the other guys are catching the ball, I mean, I know Coach Hurt was joking with me today, saying, I don't know what you guys are doing in there. He said, man, you got Charlie Spiegel catching little wheel routes. You know, but that's what competition does, and that's what you what you want in there. So I always tell the backs. I said this, this would be across the board, but I tell the backs it should always be a situation where you either separating or gaining. I said that's the way this room operates. You separating from guys or you gaining on guys. So I said, what you get in the end? You get a bunch of guys who continue to push each other to high level. So I mean, Charlie and all the rest of the guys see here's what the standard is. Here's what the goals are for this room. Look, I need to go ahead and jump on in, or I'm going to get passed up. 
you know. So that's that's the tone you want in there. It's collective guys working hard. Um, but as far as the guys catching the ball, that goes. I mean, all the guys you know are showing proficiency at that. Who maybe in the past otherwise didn't show that. Say that, I didn't hit the name you said. Okay. Well, I mean, he's doing good. You know, I mean, he had an opportunity to be, to get a lot more reps last spring just because of the guys who were injured. You know, so now it's a situation where those guys who weren't participating in spring, the guys who participate in spring, you got a pretty good baseline as of what they are and what they can do. Now I need to find out what these other cats can do. You know, I need to see how Stephen Carr, what, what, what he got. I need to evaluate Samson James. I need to evaluate Tim Baldwin more with me. You know, I need to evaluate David Ellis. So, you know, I mean, Davion, we know he's a, um, one of his greatest abilities is, is his dependability, you know. And that's a guy that you know, okay, he's going to be able to do all the things you need for him to do at a particular level, but you still need to evaluate these other guys. So Davion, you know, he got the mentality you want. He got a skill set that definitely can help us, but we still need to evaluate these other dudes. Jim, close to us early, way early. But what is the odds of someone like Charlie Spiegel seeing the field this year? Uh, I don't. As a walk on, but, but I keep hearing his name, mm -hmm. he, so obviously he's doing a lot of things. I don't know. You know, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of it. Gonna, We're going to get going in here. I know I like what I see as far as even in the spring. Don't nobody want to tackle the guy. That's a good quality to have, <laughs> you know. Y'all don't want nobody want to tackle the dude, you know. So um, that's something you know you want to continue to play off of. Continuing to get Charlie to play with more urgency, he has done that. You know, getting him to play with more detail, he has done that. You know, um, getting him to be more expressive. I mean, he's a pretty low tone, monotone guy. But again, when you're asking questions about the details and the technique, he knows those answers. So you know, you just want him to continue to develop. You know, play with confidence, understand what we're trying to have him do, and then let the chips fall where they may. You know, so guys, they got their marching orders coming out today. It's very clear on what we're doing, how we're evaluating guys. You know, and I said, look, it may be a situation where in a set of 25 plays, you might have five. I said, for me coming from the NFL, that's what it was. You might have got evaluated on that. Make it work. Be detailed. Finish down the field. Show up on tape. And Charlie, I haven't watched the tape, but at least what I've seen outside, what, you know, with the bear eye one time, I did like. So. Charlie, just like the other guys, he's going to get a fair evaluation, and then we see what happens. Go ahead. During your past time with the team, you worked pretty well with the walk-on backs. What mm -hmm. do you see in those past walk-ons, and what do you see of this current group of walk-ons that you're currently Well, I see the same things. That's, that's the encouraging part. I think, you know, when I was here before, I don't know, five or six of them guys got scholarships. You know, Zeke Roundtree and Anthony Davis and all them guys. Um, you know, Andrew Wilson and... Ricky Brookins and all them. So, I mean, I see very similar things. You know, a hunger, um, understanding the attention to detail, understand capturing the moment, you know, that when your time comes, you got to make it happen. The thing is, I won't give those guys the opportunity for their time to come if they don't show me and have my confidence. Now, once they get my confidence, then it's my job to put them in a position to get the offensive coordinator and the head coach's confidence. So, um, Davion, opportunity. Chris Childers. The guy's been showing up. We just got done talking about Charlie. So, you know, just, just encouraged by the guys. You never know what's going to happen, but it'll never be, as far as I'm concerned, a guy under me, whether he a scholarship or a walk-on guy, who say, Coach McCullough ain't give me opportunity to show what I got. All right. Thanks, Steven. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you.